I'm Brett Gibbons from Paper Cartridges. I'm here with Chris Brezavoy. And as you can see, we're back at our secret COVID-free shooting spot. Yes, we are socially distancing ourselves from society. We have something rare and I think very exciting today. This is a new rifle in the collection. And this technically predates the Minier rifle. Yes. This is a model 1848 TAP rifle used in the Royal Danish Army. And uh, came along too late for the first Schleswig War, but uh, probably as a combat veteran of the second Schleswig War of 1864, not well known in the United States because there was something else going on. Yeah, we were a little busy at the time. But it's it's a surprisingly handy little rifle for for a model 1848 and this one was made in 1851 which is an auspicious year for yes. those of you that have watched much on this channel and it's serial number 1856 so it's got 1856 stamped all pretty over. much on every something about part. Europeans like stamping yes. all their their rifle parts but now, it, it is a sweet rifle but there's something particularly unique about this one. In the breech, there is a pillar or a stem. The French word is TJ. The bullet gets smashed on top of that stem, and that is what expands it into the rifling. And it's it gonna gets be, smashed by this very heavy rammer. It's going to be an interesting habit to sort of learn where you. Yeah, have you're not to. used to slamming yes, away on the bullet. We're used not to a, very yeah. lightly ramming it down because again, this predates the Minier system of So bear in ammunition. mind, this rifle came out in 1848 and the US military was finishing up in Mexico, largely armed with flintlock smoothbore muskets. And this has got a significant rear sight. It's, you know, it's rifled, it has a patch yeah. box. This is a very soldier friendly it rifle. is. I, I especially like that you can rest yes, the, the main safety spring catch. with this, which you also see on some Habsburg rifles yes, as well. Yes, my Lorenz pistol has a similar catch. All right, I'm tired of talking. Let's shoot it. Yes, we need to shoot. Without committing too much of a social faux pas, I would like to say that that is the most substantial rammer I have seen on a musket. Well, let's hope it doesn't blow up on us. That's less than a hundred yards. feels so barbaric. You have to get used to biting the cartridge again. It is fast to load though without removing the paper. Yes. It's not like peeling Burton bullets or Williams. Yeah, see that's totally backwards. The size of that ramrod. Yeah, that is an immense ramrod, sir. nipple is smaller than the American nipple. Well, that's a trade you get for having a bigger ramrod. Right. Alright, let's try this. Now the sights, can you see the sights from here? So I'm going to loosen this ski ramp. So the sights are not in meters or in, or in anything else. It's in Old Danish Ailen which is substantially less than a modern yard. So the lowest setting with the ramp up is 400, or I guess 350. 
So I'm assuming that this is probably 300 Aelin, or about 250 yards, so that's my theory why I missed the first shot, because I was aiming dead on the target, and the sights are assuming the target is 200 yards away. So I'm going to aim ridiculously low this time. That sounded like a hit to me. Massively Way over. high. This ramrod is, is just absurd. I want to keep my fingers clear of the muzzle, but I also want to preserve the crown. It's like, yeah. what's more important? And we're firing uphill, so we'll see. Massively way over. high. I think it was high. Yeah, it was way over. Let's give it another go. The Prussians are on the hill. Over. Just over the top. Just over. Okay, I got it. That's it. That was a massive <laughs> whack. 1848, and the sights are at 450. 450 Aelin. We are shooting so, moderately light. They are, since loads. this is a beech wood stock, and it was made in 1851. And I think if I wrote a letter to the Kingdom of Denmark asking for another one, I don't know if they would send me one, so I gotta take it easy. Let's see if I can zoom in here. Let's, let's see if we can get three in a row. Oh, that never gets old. I'd say the sound is 50% louder yeah, than, a Pritchett. than with a regular Pritchett or a Lorenz. Well, the Lorenz ones, they're fast, but they're light. They're little 400 now, grain. this rifle made in 1851 and Chris will agree with me the windage is dead it's incredible on there is no left or right drift so nope. this this rifling it's and again this predates Claude Minier's mini bullet this is a pre mini rifle musket so I think just this unscientific fun little skirmish yeah this is just uh, taking it out to sort yeah, of um against against advancing prussians in uh, or, or austrians in 1864 yeah that would have done the job so the cartridge we've been firing was the original this was the one developed in 1848 for this rifle um, so this would have been what they used in the first schleswig war although the tap rifle came along a bit too late to actually see action in the first war by 1864, the Danes had switched to a what what we would call an infield style cartridge. Although this is very typical of European cartridges uh, of the day. For English speakers, this looks like an infield cartridge. So this is what they were using in 1864. This is what they were originally using. You notice the the ball is exposed and it's tied to the paper by a bit of string. And this one, it just has the powder cylinder and bullet like the conventional infield. So I want to see what this one does compared to the original. Ugh, how barbaric. 
It is very unlike you to put a cartridge in your teeth. Houston, we have a problem. Uh, yep, that's... That would have been a problem. It's a good thing I looked. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been bad. There we go. That's the real stuff. Swiss 1F. All right. All right, let's try it again. Right, take two. <clears throat> You'll edit that out, right? Yeah, totally. Okay, okay. Ooh, that is... Yeah, it's fouling. Whoop. Apparently not. I heard that hit the powder charge. You know what I want to video? Is you figuring out how to clean a pillar breech rifle. Uh, that, that is yet to be seen. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see this. Let's go four for four, eh? Over. Over. All right, the last one for this trip for the TJ. Let's see if we can ring that I, gong one I more made time. More rounds. Well, yeah, after hearing that impact, now I want a hundred of them. Over. Oh, Damn. Good. Well, it is, look at the rammer head here. I don't know if so, you can see that. In, but that has got some. It is fouling, that again, is for sure. It is, uh, it, it, this is a, what's called a Tovenin rifle, the TJ rifle, predates the Minier. So this, obviously this was not an ideal. This was a way to get a functioning rifle in the hands of soldiers in 1848. And we can see how effective it is. You know, Claude Minier didn't invent the rifle. He just came up with a slightly, slightly improved version of the bullet and uh his name lives on for that but uh that is fun gonna have to definitely shoot a lot more of these this is like now my second favorite rifle well we have other new ones to shoot yet today and it's getting hot Die Fliege von Nekko, der Stall von Neumann, der Hohe Zeit.